Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Keep It Techie where we break down Linux tools and commands to help you level up in tech one command at a time. I'm Josh and today we're going to explore a command that turns chaotic directories into clean visual structures. And if you've ever opened up a folder and thought, yo, what is this? Then this video is definitely for you. And the command I'm covering is the tree command. It's simple, it's powerful, and it's one of those tools that makes navigating large directory structures way easier, especially if you're working with nested folders, development environments, or messy project folders from other people. So if you're trying to stay organized and work smarter on Linux, stick around, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So what exactly is the tree command? So I brought up the Wikipedia page just so you guys can get a little bit of the background of the actual command. It was actually developed for MS-DOS and a version was created for Unix and Unix-like systems as well. Therefore, there is a Linux version and I want to focus in on the Linux version. But I'll put this link down in the description of the video so you guys can check out the history and all that good stuff. But basically the command shows the directory structure of a path or the current working directory in a visual structured tree format. So think of it like a bird's eye view of your folder and files showing everything nested step by step. So it's kind of beneficial being that you won't have to constantly LS and then CD and then LS. You can find out what the path is you're looking for by just running one command to find whatever subdirectory you're looking for that contains the files that you're potentially looking for within the command line. And the cool part about it, it lays it all out in a single view. It's basically complete with indentations and structure. And when you run it, you'll basically get an output that looks like this. And so this tool is super awesome when you're managing like large code bases or config folders or backup directories, or even in your home lab setup. Now, let me talk about why learning this command matters. Let's say you inherit someone else's project and you had no idea where anything was. Or maybe you're working on something with tons of nested folders. Let's say a web app or server configurations, logs, those types of files can get wild real fast. Here's the thing. Tree doesn't just show you what's in a folder. It shows you how things are related. Like for instance, where config files live, where backups go, where files are duplicated. And that structure tells the full story. Like for instance, tree helps with visualizing complex folder structures quickly. And also let's say you're auditing file organization or creating documentation snapshots, debugging issues in nested directories, even generating diagrams of your system's file structure. For system admins, developers, educators, even home labbers, this command is like having a roadmap when everyone else is stuck with directions written on a napkin. And one thing I'll do within the example is I'll show you guys one of my projects, how things can be complex and how easy this command can make it. So let's hop into the terminal and show you guys the command. All right, so this is Ubuntu 24.04. You can install it on pretty much any Linux distro. It's in the main repository for Ubuntu. I'll show you guys how to quickly install it because it don't come pre-installed on the system, which I kind of wish it did. It just doesn't for some reason, but let's go down and install it. All you have to do is type sudo apt install and then the application name is tree and let's go down and install it. And I've already updated my system. So everything has been updated on here and I rebooted and everything. As you can see, it'll install the application for you. But like I said, it's in the main repository. That's all you got to do is install it. You can also use the app center, just search tree. You can find it, install it from there as well. But let's go down and clear and I can quickly show you guys the man page for it. This will give you some information about the options that you can use for the command. That's one good thing about this command. It does have a man page or a manual. So you guys can check out how to use it a little bit better using these options that you have in here. And I'll show you guys a couple other ones that I use because I use this a lot, especially when I'm developing applications. A lot of times I'm developing on a server. Normally when I develop up, I use like VS Codium and I'll connect to the server remotely, but I also SSH via the command line. I jump back and forth and sometimes I need to look from the command line. And so that tree command comes in super handy when I'm developing applications. And I'll show you guys an application that I developed not that long ago, which 
kind of uses AI as well. And so the tree command, I could show you guys my full structure so you guys can see the command in action on a real directory. But anyway, let's cover the basics. And what I'm gonna do is CD to our ETC directory. And then let's see, what, what do we wanna go into here? I know this is a lot of directories, but let's see. Let's use our NetPlan directory, which I always show you guys that directory when I'm showing you guys how to set up a static IP address. So we can use that one. And let's CD to NetPlan, boom. And then let's LS it right fast. And actually let's go back up one directory just so we can see a little bit more information by running a tree command. Now, let me show you guys a tree command. And now this is going to be super long under the ETC directory. That's why I was looking for another command that'll be a little bit less of files and directories. But as you can see at the bottom, it just breaks it out right there. It's 382 directories, 2,421 files. So probably should have used one of these other directories in here that might have worked a little bit better. But as you can see, it breaks it all out. It's got everything indented. It's got the lines to it to where the files fall under those directories. It even shows you the links and all that stuff where things are linked to like the service files and all that stuff is linked to a specific location. But yeah, this is a super awesome command. And like I said, you'll see a full tree of everything inside whatever directory you're working in. And it defaults to the current working directory, like we said, and it's super handy for a quick overview of certain things. Like for instance, let's go to the snap directory. I think that's the directory above this one. Let's go a little further or that's the system directory. Yeah, let's go into there right there. That's for our service account. So let's go into system. So let's CD to system, boom. And then let's run tree under there. That way you guys can see a little bit better of representation. It's not as big, but it still is big. But anyway, as you can see, and then let's make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see, but as you can see, it breaks it all out. And actually I should've went under system and I would've just captured that system directory. And let's do that. Let's go system. And then let's run tree under there as well. Boom, there we go, lot cleaner. So let's say you were looking for a specific, I don't know, timer or a service or something, then this kind of breaks it out a whole lot easier for you to find. So you don't have to sit there and go into each directory and then LS or look for the actual file that you're actually looking for. Or if it's under this snap, or multi-user, the snap files, or cron.service, cat, cups, which I don't think you should be going in and messing with any of this anyway, but this just gives you an example of how it actually works. Now let's go back up one directory. I wanna show you guys something very right fast. There's another option you can use where you can limit the depth of the actual command. And actually I was supposed to put dot dot, press enter, that'll go up one directory. And let's run tree. And then the option is dash capital L and you can specify the depth that you want it to go. So let's limit it to two directories. It'll go only go two directories deep. And you guys will see from the example, you'll see it's a little bit more cleaner. As you can see, it, it only went down two directories. And so this means it'll only show subdirectories two levels down. And so that's great for keeping the output clean when dealing with super big folders. That's why I wanted to show you guys that. And you can specify even further, let's do three right fast. And you'll see that it goes a little bit further down the directory tree. So it's a little bit cleaner, but it still only goes three folders down. Now there is another option I wanted to show you guys, and that is the dash D option. And this only shows you directories. So let's say you only wanna look at the directories within a tree. So let's run tree. We can say in the same directory dash D it's a lowercase D press. This will only show you the directory. So super cool, right? Only goes so far and only shows you the directories and the rest of this stuff is files, which most of them are linked because those are services or sockets and all that stuff for the file system. And this is like perfect. If you're just scoping out the folder layout, if you want to just check that out and let's say you're creating some documentation you want to understand what the directory structure is or you want to output this to somewhere so we can run that same command and we can output it to a file let's put a file in our home directory and then we can name folder structure txt and press enter and that'll output that structure to it and we can just cut out that folder and i call it home josh and then file the structure 
press and there we go so we got it output it to a text file in case we need to i don't know add it to some documentation or something to that effect now let me get out of here right fast and i want to show you guys something else so my ssh into one of my servers i just show you guys a project i'm working on right now so you guys can see the structure and how I actually use the tree command if I need to while developing. And I already have tree installed on the server. So let me just get into my directory. I think this is it. Yeah, that's it. So let's run the tree command and let's just look at directories right fast so you guys can see. So yeah, this is the directory structure, which yeah, this is a virtual environment or Python environment. So that's why it's bringing up all these files. Let me clean it up a little better. Let me go into, let's see, let's LS right fast. I can't remember my main directories. Let's check out my, my dashboard right fast. Cause I created a website so I can check all this stuff. So let's actually CD to that directory right fast and then let's run a tree command there and this should give us a little bit cleaner of an output ah and it's not really much there and actually let's just run the tree command so you guys can see a little bit better there we go so you see the files you can see the directories and where everything is so we got json files in there text files html files css files so as you can see that's the structure of a website and then the app.py for the website it's a flask website all right so let me show you guys another way of doing it i just thought about it let's go back up a directory and what you can do is limit the file amount it'll show directories with files less than a certain amount that you specify so let me show you guys that and that's a way of condensing that long list i showed you guys a little bit earlier and actually let me bring this up to the top so you guys can see a little better but let's run tree and this option is file limit and then you can specify the amount of files so i'm gonna just do 15 and it'll exclude anything over 15 files so all those directories like python directories that have like a whole bunch of files and directories underneath it you know what i'm saying it'll exclude those it won't really exclude them it'll just condense them or compress them so it'll show just that top level so let me show you guys what i mean so let's run it right fast and this will bring up a cleaner structure for us so as you can see it only brought up 18 directories 48 files files and as you can see that virtual environment really is what takes up a lot of the crap so as you can see the site package right here 155 entries exceeds the file limit so it's not going to open that directory it's going to exclude that directory and this one has 21 entries so it's not it's going to exclude that as well so anyway this is the full project just so you guys can see the full project because my main full project it doesn't have over those 15 files or whatever so that's the website that i just showed you guys right there and this is the full application up here with all the python scripts and agents and loggers and all that stuff that i built for this application and like i said this is all tied into ai and i don't want to go too far into explaining this application i was going to do a video showing you guys this i was going to put it on my github right now it's hidden so nobody can see it but yeah this is like a twitter bot and i've been testing it out just playing around with it really just to see if i can get something like that to work you know what i'm saying on my own using ai to generate tweets and also learn from tweets that actually do well on the platform so you know it was just an interesting idea that i came up with and i figured i'll just try it out and just play around with it and see where it goes but anyway when i'm looking for like a specific file that i'm trying to find or a python file that i need to go in and edit this was a quick way of actually doing it by using a tree file so i wanted to show you guys a real example of actually using it finding files otherwise i would have to go ls boom okay it might be under the agents directory so let's go ls or let's cd the agents directory and press enter and then ls it's not there oh man so i gotta go back up a directory you see what i'm saying so that's the benefit of using that tree command you can find exactly where you need to go and then you can go there and get to the file that you need to go to and also just so you guys know i'm gonna bring this up i'm gonna run that command again that we just ran the limits and what I'm gonna do is add a couple more options. So I'm gonna put dash A and H. Now the A is for all, this will pull up hidden files, just like any other application from the command line. Like with the LS command, you can run LS dash LA. A stands for bringing all the files, including hidden files. And then the H is for human readable files. So this will bring up the sizes. So let's say it's kilobytes or megabytes, etc. It 
makes looking for a big file super easy when you're trying to clean up space so let me just run that again so you guys can see right fast so you can see file size is there so i just wanted to at least throw that in there as a bonus tip for you guys all right guys so that wraps up the tree command it might not be flashy but this command is a power tool when you're dealing with cluttered directories or need a quick overview of your file hierarchy it saves time boosts clarity and helps you stay efficient whether you're working in your home lab writing code or if you're just trying to clean up your downloads folder now if you find this video helpful go down and hit that like button subscribe if you're all about mastering linux tools one step at a time and if you're really trying to support what i do here check out the keep it techie merch also the membership if you want to and before i sign off go down and drop a comment and let me know what's the messiest folder on your system right now all right guys i'll catch you guys in the next one peace yo what's up y'all listen if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move let me tell you tech is where it's at i don't care where you coming from whether you've got a degree a ged or just pure hustle there's room for you in this game you see tech is more than just keyboards and code it's solving problems creating opportunities and building the future you already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start it cares where you're willing to go you can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's gonna take effort. You'll have to grind, but think about this. The time is gonna pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself. Store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it taking. Wow. <laughs>